All right, let's set this video up a little bit. Uh, I think one of the obvious weakest positions for the Lions, at least based on what the fans are saying, is linebacker, right? So a lot of us are saying we need a new linebacker. I think also there was a lot of people that weren't thrilled with the contract of Alex Anzalone. It's starting to look not as bad, but a lot of people are like, man, 18 million. And then all of a sudden there is a well-known linebacker that uh, flashes great athleticism and things like that uh, from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that request a trade, demand or trade, whatever you want to say, however you want to say it. And so now all of a sudden, of course, Detroit Lions are like, man, we got camp cap room. We got stuff like this. Linebacker seems like a weak area. We need to go trade for Devin White. So here's what I want to do in this video. I want to talk about why we don't need to go trade for Devin White. I'm sorry. I don't want to break, burst your bubble, but please watch the video and let the stats do the talking for you. I understand the excitement on Devin White. When we look at him at PFF, I want to look at stats and other things of that nature. So he had 91 tackles and 23 assists. So the guy ended up with, you know, based on my math, what? 114 um, tackles, no picks, two forced fumbles. That's good. His player grades were absolutely atrocious. Um, if you want to use Devin White, as a guy off the edge a little bit in a pass rush grade or up the middle, fine. Everything else was bad. Not okay, not poor, not good. It was bad. Overall grade of 45.5, a run defense grade of 42, a coverage grade of 47. Are you kidding me with this? All right, it's not good. All right, so then it's just like, all right, well... What about our guys? What about Alex Anzalone? Because everybody's struggling with this guy, and he's not the only person I'm going to talk about. So we're going to talk grades, and then don't worry. We're going to go beyond that. <clears throat> Alex Anzalone, 41 or 78 plus 41. Uh, that's 119 tackles. All right, he had a pick and a forced fumble. His grades are okay. This is what okay grades look like. Uh, 59.2, 58.5, 65.2, and 58.9. Linebacker grades are typically a little more brutal with PFF because they have so many things they can be responsible for a lot. The snaps played are very <coughs> are very similar. Um, here's the thing that everybody knocks on Alex Anzalone. Missed tackles, 17. Ooh, that's not great, right? 17 missed tackles. You want to know how many Devin White has? You want to know? 16. In 417 snaps for Devin White and 417 run defensive snaps for Alex Anzalone, they both had almost the exact same number of missed tackles. You want a guy who is better in coverage. That's where the Lions are struggling they don't need a ton more help with a pass rush. They have it. They have James Houston. They have Aiden Hutchinson. They have Pascal coming back. They have a lot of guys loaded up on the line that can do those sort of things. <clears throat> they do. I would even say Barnes is going to have the ability to do some of that. So what about our other guy? What about our other linebacker that is going to be a perceived starting linebacker? Your boy, Malcolm Rodriguez. All right. Again, young, 24 years old. He didn't play as many snaps, 278. He had nine missed tackles, so the missed tackle rate with him was about the same. Nobody actually believes that he misses tackles, though. It seems like when he gets a hand on you, you're done. It's the wrestler in him, but he was missing tackles, too. It's hard <laughs> when you're a linebacker. <clears throat> These things happen. He overall had the best PFF grade of anyone. 62.8. His run defense was by far the best of either guy. His pass rush was good and his coverage was better than White's. So here's the way I look at it. We could go trade for White. <clears throat> Maybe we give up the fifth round pick. I mean, it'll probably take more for some reason. <clears throat> But maybe we give up the fifth round pick for him. And it's like, all right, we traded Okuda for White. That's not bad. I don't hate doing that. I don't hate giving up a late round pick that we just got. And essentially we're trading Okuda for White. But don't go out there and give a lot. And I think it's going to take more. The numbers don't lie. Devin White was not an effective linebacker last year. He was not an effective 
linebacker. And, and it's just, it's hard to see. Oh, well, you know, I understand he was an effective linebacker last year, but what about the year before that? All right. Worse. Look worse. 36.2. This is an unplayable number. Run defense, atrocious coverage, really bad. This is un, unplayable numbers, <clears throat> unplayable. Like this isn't a, Hey, you can't start him. This is a, you can't play that dude. You can't play him. And so like, I want to talk to people and just be like, stop with going nuts about Devin white. I don't know what you're going to give up for him, but <laughs> you can't. And you're wondering to yourself like, well, <clears throat> fine, but let's let him play the third linebacker for sure. He's better than Derek Barnes. Is he? There it is. There it is. 62 overall grade. I understand it's over um, 164 coverage snaps and, and um, 153 run snaps, but his run defense was really good. His pass rush was okay. His coverage was bad. I get it. So I just don't understand the obsession. It doesn't matter what stat you're looking at, whether it's missed tackles, whether it's coverage, whether it's QB rating when throwing to him. The only number that looks good for Devin White is that last year he had six sacks and the year before that he had four sacks. He had six sacks and four sacks, whereas Anzalone had two. All right. Anzalone had two. Um, Derek Barnes had a sack, by the way. But anyways, like these are the things that you have to look at and be like, oh, now if you want to compare what um, Devin White's numbers look like, all you have to do is look at Derek Barnes two years ago. And that's where you get the similar overall of a 30. And I think we all thought Derek Barnes two years ago, we wanted him to be good, but he was borderline unplayable. He was borderline unplayable. That's what you're looking at with these guys. So here's what I want to say. Um, please don't trade for Devin White. Like, Maybe put in the right position, he could have success in Detroit, but he was on a really good defense in Tampa Bay. That was a good defense over the last few years, and he stunk. So you can say right position, but they knew what they were doing over there, and he stunk, all right, with a defensive coach, like a good team, and he was not good. All right, so with all that being said, make sure you're watching the draft with us and uh, maybe we'll be drafting a linebacker uh, April 27th. We're going to be there for the whole first round. Can't wait to have you all with us and uh, hit that subscribe button below, especially if you made it to this point in the video, you must like it a little bit and we'll see you on the next one.